Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our weird lighting. If we look splotchy, it's because we're like in a really weird spot in the parking lot. Also, if you hear planes, MOA is right by an airport, so. Speaking of MOA, wow. happy Tuesday. How is everybody? Twice Tuesday. Welcome to a very highly anticipated, very exciting, one of our favorites to film all year video. And that is the Trend R&D. So if you're new here, R&D of course stands for Research and Development. What we do is we take all of the info that we gained and delivered to you guys in the Spring Trend Report that just went up exactly a week ago. Yes, yes. and we we show you it in action. We show you the proof. We show you the proof in the pudding. We go to Mall of America and we find these trends on mannequins being sold from all the like popping, popular, trendy. All the places, all the expensive places, mm -hmm. all the trendy places, yeah. the in-betweens. It'll be a good time. Yes, and of course, since we live in Minnesota and we have the Mall of America at our disposal, we have a lot of stores with very trendy clothing at. Oh, we have Nordstrom, so we have sad. Free People, Madewell, like literally everything under the sun. So we're gonna go to all kinds of stores and show you what we find. We will voice over and tell you the trends that we're seeing, where. Because of course, some stores specialize more in like the trendy college age girlies mm -hmm. type styles like yeah. Urban Outfitters and Free People possibly. But then there's places like Nordstrom that are of course more like runway, more mature. So there's or different- Or the trendy stuff that's just ungodly expensive. Yes. One of the show. So there's different trends that maybe pop up in different places where they belong better. But before we go in, let's do like a tiny little recap of some of the stuff on the top of our minds, some of the biggest trends we saw. So for jewelry and accessories, we saw- Melty. Melty, very metallic. Mm -hmm. Boba jewelry, Rose, floral, mm -hmm. chains, chains. On the top of the body, we saw a lot of cardigans, a lot of like knitwear and sweaters. Maybe not as heavy and chunky, but kind of like thinner knits. Muted colors. We saw very natural muted colors. I'm in. Yes. <laughs> a lot of stuff was very like single color. So even if it's not muted and it is a brighter color, a lot of stuff is just like one color. There's not a bunch of prints. Don't look at Ryan when thinking of the trends. Apparently this year. <laughs> There's a face on this shirt that you'll probably see. <gasps> She's revealed. She's gonna get you. <laughs> On the bottoms, we still saw 90s dad jeans, 90s baggy jeans being really popular, kind of the wide legs. We saw some cuffs to the denim and stuff like that. We saw dark and medium wash. We saw the weird, uh, one thing I'm gonna be looking for, because I like to look for the more like niche weird trends, is those like paneled sheer skirts. Oh, I think free people. I was just gonna say that. Free I think people, they might have one or I, four. I could see maybe. Anthro maybe having that. Yeah. And some certain sections of Nordstrom probably would too. Mm -hmm. We saw some medium tote bags, kind of top handle totes or shoulder bags are really trendy. Mm -hmm. We saw the, which I hope we see a lot of and we should, the pointed toe Mary Jane sling back kitten heel. I can't even imagine. And the ballet flats. I can't even imagine. Especially the Mary Jane ballet flats. And then nautical, red, burgundy, gray, natural colors, natural, okay. all that natural. type of stuff. Yeah, coquette type coquette. styles. All the coquette And things. then the swim, there's just too much. You'll have to go look at the trend report too. That's to, a lot. To fill there's in the swim. swim. There's trends. the swim, like, and it's all very like miscellaneous and doesn't really go together. So lots no. of swim stuff that we will point out in this video as well. So yeah. we're gonna pop into the mall. We usually start with Nordstrom, but I guess we'll just see where we, where the winds blow us, where yeah. the Mall of America gusts Take blow us to, and we will catch you inside. Bringing back memories. <laughs> Green sweater. I miss her. I have no idea where it went. Per 
Ryan's request, we stopped at Zara first, which I will give him is the super rapid fast fashion capital of the world, so I think it makes a lot of sense to stop here today. And right away, I was seeing some single colored dresses. They had some of the scrunching detail that we were seeing on swimsuits, but the whole single color sleeveless dress is really what we were seeing a lot of. Also, there was a table of jeans right at the front as well, and all of the jeans were in a darker or medium wash, except that one pair. They're in that wash that I call farmer's wash. <laughs> I also was seeing some sleeveless ribbed tops that are single colored as well. This is another trend that we were seeing a lot of. Also this blue in particular was quite popular in the trends too. None of the colors are very bright or super spring and ooh, comes with free deodorant. Zara also had its fair share of medium shoulder bags. These were something that we were seeing a lot of as well. Again, the colors are not super spring. They're quite natural, they're quite blah, except red. Red we are seeing a lot of. The first trend that I spotted was this really beautiful cutout dress and I was interested because they do a lot of this with like swimwear but they really didn't do a whole lot with dresses this year so that was interesting to see. The cuffed jeans were definitely making a lot of appearances this trip. They were in a bunch of different washes and honestly this is I think one of the trends that I am really on board with. I think this looked really cute. I think we touched on it just a little bit in the trend report, but Y2K still has this massive chokehold on everybody. And the denim dresses were absolutely everywhere. These denim maxi dresses especially, and I liked, if you notice, those little clogs that they had underneath it. I think that's a really cute outfit, like a little clog and a little denim maxi dress. I liked the little pocket on this one, very, very 90s. This I thought was really cute, if you kind of like layered them for like a little denim on denim moment, I thought that was a kind of a cute look. This was funny because I was noticing that jeans that weren't necessarily supposed to be cuffed, people were cuffing them and then hanging them back up on the hanger. This I thought was so funny. Practical application, like, and I think objectively they do look good. This like denim painted with this silver, Lord knows what, is um, evil to me. I absolutely cannot stand these. It gives very 2010s to me. This is like 2010, 2011 Coachella. <gasps> this was one of the first handbags that I saw on this lovely little trip. And this is a really good example of these kind of like classic medium sized shoulder bags. And they had this really cute one in like a canvas too. This entire little store display situation was so Y2K. It kind of hurt. It was this like muddy tie-dye sweater top and then these jeans. And these jeans just fascinated me because what in the world is this thing for? Like, I don't know. I think it's an extra little bit of material that we didn't need to be there, but like, okay. This t-shirt I filmed strictly because it made no sense and I thought it was absolutely hysterical. First time in Rhode Island. First time in Rhode Island. You could find a pair of Mary Janes in every size, style, color, and whatever. This was the worst. This was definitely the most cursed. Um, if you could feel this material, it feels like a child's like princess Halloween costume is the best way I can describe it. It's awful. These were absolutely treacherous. Um, this was a very good example of like a cute little Y2K moment. This, I really liked the style of it. I liked the like darker denim. And I thought this kind of like 80s drop waist, like little tennis dress was also really cute. I would kind of put this dress in the like nautical category, especially because they had it with these loafers. I don't know, this just kind of gives like doc. I have no idea what kind of nonsense was going on with that one, but we left her right there. And what was I saying? There is a Mary Jane in every color for every outfit. And here is my wonderfully handsome partner showing the teeny little kitten heel, but look at how small. I feel like kitten heels have definitely like lost an inch or two since I was a kid because I remember them being like a little bit taller. I also was just absolutely fascinated by this bracelet. It has nothing to do with the trends. I just thought it was cool. And look at that. There's another one. A whole bunch of kittens. And if you are not feeling the slingback kitten heel, you could do the same slingback kitten mule. What I think I was seeing the most of is the Mary Jane Ballet Flats. Here is a pair that is in black patent. It has the strap across to make it Mary Jane, and then there were also a cream version of it as well. 
there's so many of them. Help. And around the next corner, what do you know? I spotted more ballet Mary Jane flats. These ones were kind of a mesh. It's almost like an Easter egg hunt, but it's find all the deodorant stains in Zara. Spoiler alert, they're everywhere. It's a pretty easy game. But once again, these were some single color tops that were sleeveless. This is the trend, so not surprising to see. Also, they had the wide leg linen or linen feeling pants. I'm not really sure if Zara uses real linen, but these were meant to be linen-like pants. I didn't really check the fabric tag. And again, if you'll notice, these are in very natural earthy colors, which are very trendy this season. More single colored sleeveless tops, and as you'll see, the only color that's really popping out here is red. There is red in every section so far, which doesn't surprise me. Moving a little farther in Zara, I spotted more Mary Jane ballet flats. And walking a little bit further, I saw some more shoes on the horizon. What could they be? Mary Jane ballet flats! There were more ballet flats, and these ones were crystal covered. Woo! Also, they had silver ones. <laughs> Buy a bunch of red stuff. I can't believe it. More sleeveless dresses in red. Lots and lots and lots and lots of red. And for the more moto cross girl in your life, there's some Mary Jane ballet flats that are patterned with a buckle. Oh, yeah. I also spotted, along with <laughs> more ballet flats, this vest, this blazer-like vest, which as we said in the trend report, is a big trend this year. Not surprising to see. They did also have some ribbed sleeveless dresses too. All right, we went downstairs in Zara and what to my wandering eye appeared right away? Oh, more Mary Jane ballet flats. All right, let's keep our eyes up. Let's not look at the shoes right now. I did see this knit polo top. Knit tops are very in, so this fits. Okay, a little, a little more refreshing to see. We saw some slightly strappy sandals, which were trendy this year. We saw some of the chunky white sneakers, which were trendy as well, and slingback heeled mules. So we are seeing some other things besides Mary Jane ballet flats, but the shoe trends are all here. It's like a family reunion. The return of Twee is eminent. These I thought were really cute. These were honestly some of my most favorite in the store. Funny enough, they are definitely a Mew Mew knockoff. Um, I love these little pleated mini skirts. Very preppy, especially with like the fake sambas. And apparently my wonderful mother would have liked to make an appearance today. This is a Jana outfit. This really cute, very on trend, a little sailor top, very preppy with the pinstripes. And then the dark wash skinny jean. I really did like these sandals, and I think this is a good example of what Jack was talking about in the trend report, where they're strappy, but they're not like overly strappy. They also had this really adorable little silver pair of slingbacks. They must have had like an entire factory of this material laying around, because they also make it in this like weird little slingback flat thing. Okay, I showed the sweater, not because of the sweater, because the sweater is awful, but these buttons are very untrend for jewelry. If you were to like pop these off and turn them into a pair of earrings, see like it's already coming apart, ew. That would be really adorable. And I love this like, they look like a fortune cookie almost, or like a flower. So we've seen black, silver, mesh, and now we have cream, a little Mary Jane. I think these were the best out of all of them. I really don't think you can go wrong with a cream shoe. I really like them. They had the black pattern over there as well. This was haunted. This is a rosette. I have no idea if this was like a necklace or a brooch or something. It was $18, which I thought was really expensive. We were getting ready to head out of Zara and I spotted a strappy Mary Jane heeled mule, which was another extremely trendy style this year, especially with the pointed toe. So this fit right in. And some medium-sized bucket bags. These were really, really popular too online for the spring. We spotted some sleeveless, very natural colored dresses in linen, very trendy, very spring. Some more white dad style sneakers. 
and a bunch of sweaters in very natural colors, including this one that looks like it has a nautical type striping to it, and we saw some more of that teal sort of color. Last but not least, in Zara, we saw some capris. They're here, guys. They are here. The capris are back, and they even have their weird little belts. <laughs> Next, we're heading to a much more safe place for the two of us, <laughs> Anthropology. Anthro didn't have a ton of the trends, but of course, right away, we spotted the white wide leg pants. Some were cuffed, very trendy, very in this season. I think once Twee fully comes back, Anthro is gonna be popping off. They also had this knit sort of polo top. Again, the button knit shirts are really, really in. This goes for men and women this season. I really did love this anthropology mannequin. I thought that this really interesting take on the denim maxi trend was really adorable and I loved the top they paired with it. It was this like handkerchief kind of a style. So it was this like patchwork kind of a thing, so cute. This dress was very in the Y2K category. This looks like an older anthropology piece that they just put back in the store. I kind of did like this like crinkly little linen-y moment though, but like for $160, I thought that was a bit much. I also did really love this kind of like tennis pickleball kind of a vibe with these really cute little t-shirts. I really liked the graphics on these that kind of like vintage inspired. And if you know this anthropology, this used to be the kitchen section and now they have completely turned it into this like really fun, like tennis vibe with a little a hint of nautical in there too. I had a sneaking suspicion that anthropology would be where we find a lot of the twee. I think these two are really good examples of it. I think this next little sweater vest with these really cute little, oh my gosh, I almost called them acorns, these squirrels, lordy, was very twee, as well as that gray dress that we looked at before. I also loved this kind of like thicker, very like Nantucket nautical stripe pair of pants. I loved the green in this, big surprise. And this is what I've been waiting for. This is the perfect example of a pair of barrel jeans. And this is a really good example of a denim maxi skirt. Next up, onto my happy place. We are onto Nordstrom, and I have a feeling that the shoe section right in here is going to have a lot of the trends. Right when you enter is all the bougie shoes, and Gucci was definitely pulling off the pointed toe mule slingback kitten heel. Prada also had their own iteration of a kitten heel that was actually the Prada logo. It was really cool. They kind of had some natural colors going on here, and theirs was more of a square toe, though like we said, the pointed toe ones like these are much more in this season. So slingback, mule, kitten heel, all the boxes are checked. Burberry was even checking all the boxes. This kind of caught me by surprise. I wouldn't see this and think Burberry right away, but once again, we're seeing the pointed toe, slingback mule with a kitten heel. They also had some ballet flats at Burberry. Burberry is really changing things up. They must have a new creative director or something, but all of this was kind of not what I would normally expect from them. They even had a kitten heel ballet flat. I guess ballet kitten. Valentino had all kinds of the trends. They had kind of this caged mule flat, except it actually had a tiny little heel. It's even younger than a kitten. It's like an unbirthed baby kitten. <laughs> they had a lot of ballet flats, of course, with their rock studs. They had the kitten heel, slingback mule. They had some strappy ballet flats. They, they, they literally had everything. They had all of the trends in every different print, logos, rock studs, all these different colors. I love these ones. These are beautiful. They were really leaning into the trends this season. I just, I'm sorry, I can't get over these really sparkly black and white ones. Chanel, the leader in ballet flats, had, of course, slingback ballet flats. If they hadn't had ballet flats, I think something would have been wrong. Something would be off in the air and in the water. I don't know. 
They also had Mary Jane straps to a bunch of their shoes, including the ballet flats. They had some more like wedge ballet flats that of course had the Mary Jane straps too. Jimmy Choo had some very trendy kind of wall heel sandals as I call them. And then of course some heeled Mary Janes and some ballet flats. They also have a new logo and the inside of shoes that I did not know about. Oh wow, I can't believe it. The white sneaker trend is in Golden Goose? Really? They make white sneakers? No. Onto the bags, and right away in the Bottega Veneta bags, I was seeing those natural colors. This was a really nice, like, sage green. Then there were also some unnatural colors, like the silver one, but the shoulder bag, top handle bag, is fitting of the trends. Chloe had some very trendy medium-sized totes that were top handle. Chloe is really leaning back into Bohemian, which I don't think has fully come back yet, but also it never goes away. There also was some Raffia being advertised by Prada. Their entire display window was Raffia, and of course all of their bags, as they normally are, were shoulder bags. We did talk about how big bags are kind of out of the style, but I would absolutely take that bag. It's beautiful. This was my favorite thing I saw at Nordstrom. It's not really trendy, but I think it would be considered preppy. This is a leather Bottega Veneta bag that looks like a shirt. It's perfect. It's so perfect. This was a stunning Carolina Herrera dress that I saw at Nordstrom, and I really loved this take on the rosette trend. They definitely gave rosette, but it wasn't that, like, chunky texture kind of a vibe. This I thought was really interesting. It was a Montclair, who was known for their puffers, made this really nice denim skirt. I really loved the wash on this one. In the bougier clothes, Theory of all brands was really, really full spearheading the nautical theme. They had these cardigans with a nautical stripe, they had dresses, it's like looking in Janet's closet. Marc Jacobs, unsurprisingly, was very trendy with their bags. They had some medium bucket bags and some medium top handle totes in natural colors. Tory Burch had some really good medium totes as well, some slightly smaller ones and slightly larger ones. She luckily had some color to them, which we're not seeing as much this year, but thank you, Tori. Okay, I don't want to go into Ever Eve, but we'll look in the windows because I would feel weird in there. So in Ever Eve, the display window definitely was nautical and very preppy and almost twee. And here we are looking at the practical application of denim skirts. Now let's look at some of the younger girly trends in Urban Outfitters. In Urban Outfitters, I instantly saw some of the single color sleeveless dresses. I also finally spotted our first pair of barrel jeans. These were some white barrel jeans too, so double check the two boxes. They had some other colors of barrel jeans as well, and some were even at a capri length. Like, look at these black ones. Urban even had a swim section, so I was able to find some of the swim trends, and they had a lot of them. They had these frilly ruffle edge swimsuits, which like we said, is very popular this season, and they're very printed, which is another thing that's super in. They had some textured rib swimsuits, which is another really popular thing. Again, some bandeau, some ruffles, some prints, all of the trends were here. They even had this other kind of texture that was almost like spongy, and they had this black one that was again ribbed. The one-piece swimsuits were also on trend. Again, we were seeing all kinds of really vibrant prints and open backs. So it's like, take the 90s look of a one-piece swimsuit and then just splatter it with colors and prints and stuff. Another closer look at the white barrel jean. Again, this one kind of seemed capri length. It might have been ankle, but either way, white and barrel. I am also just fascinated by all these little t-shirts at Urban Outfitters, but this really took the cake for me. I'm gonna try to do this. It's a bandana that they have tied around a pair of glasses. Super cute. Anyway, this just keeps coming back to haunt me. These awful silver painted jeans. They are not trendy. I'm de-influencing them for all of you. Never buy them. Because, like, why? Like, for what? This I thought was really cute, though, comma, however. This was very 
cockhead to me with like a teeny little bit of twee thrown in there. This sweater also gave twee and if it didn't have that weird kind of boxy thing over the top of the tomato, I would 100% have bought this. I absolutely love this sweater. Another really good example of a pair of barrel jeans. This one is in a white version. I like really don't mind these. I can see how they're really trendy and they probably won't be in the next five years, but I don't really mind them. And here is our first example of a capri. These are another example of Y2K, just kind of in everything and existing everywhere. These were the 90s baggy. And it's funny because I would wear that exact same outfit, maybe with a bit of a longer shirt. But they definitely had a whole bunch of different kinds of denim. They all had a bunch of different washes of denim. And I think they all kind of exist in that same, like, 90s Y2K kind of a vibe. This little wall was such a perfect example of, like, this intermixture of twee and coquette for me. They had these really adorable little, like, very summery, almost a little tomato girl kind of a vibe. But then these little bags give Von Dutch. This really adorable little white top is so coquette with this little bow in front of it and the lace. They had a really cute blue one as well. I was personally a fan of the yellow one because of the different color of the ribbon. And these little pedal pushers, these little capri pants that go with it. When looking for the trends, of course, we have to stop at Aritzia as well. Since a lot of the trends this season are very minimal, I was expecting to see a lot here, and right at the entrance I already saw the blazer style vests. I was really not surprised when Aritzia had a lot of the sailor stripe stuff. My mother is going to be purchasing all of that, as well as these really adorable barrel, kind of cuffed up jeans. Again with the Y2K, here we go with the capris in three different colors. These give a little more Kim Possible. I liked the capris from Urban Outfitters a little bit more. We were seeing the single colored sleeveless tops, including the ones in this light blue color that we've been seeing a lot, and more of the blazer style vests. This one was even pinstripe. As we said, trench coats are really in this spring, and of course Aritzia had a number of trench coats from their different brands. Another one I'm not surprised to see here is the oversized cotton shirt, and like we said, those are usually single color or they can kind of have a pinstripe like that. There was another vest jacket, which clearly Aritzia is really leaning into, and then they had even more of the single color cotton tops. In the jeans, they had some denim maxi skirts, which this one kind of did surprise me here. I guess not too much, but this is a huge trend and Aritzia is even selling it. Next up, we went to Free People. Right away, there were some baggy barrel style pants. These are more of almost like a jogger barrel pant. And unsurprisingly then, when we got in the jeans, there were barrel jeans everywhere. Some were cuffed, some were not, a lot were medium or dark wash, but there were so many barrel jeans here. Here is another pair in that medium darker wash that's very trendy right now. Again, almost like a farmer's wash or like a minor wash. I don't know why that's what comes to my mind. And then some were in more of a classic wash too. We had a maxi dress that was fully cotton, tiered, and sleeveless. Very trendy for spring. This is kind of a trend we see every spring, of course. There were some of these single color button shirts. These were kind of a linen cotton material, and they had a little bit more color to them than some of the other stuff, but only a little bit more. There were these jeans that were really cute. These were cuffed and white, but they made them more bohemian. So this is the more like fun spring stuff that I like to see. And then they had some floret details, which we've been seeing a little bit for the past couple seasons, but this year it's very popular for the accessories and the jewelry. They had some very minimal belts, which is another trend we were seeing besides this heart one, but these more like minimal, just smooth leather with a normal belt buckle belts are very in for this season. There were some white jeans, which are really in. There were some baggy dad jeans, which are also really in. 
And the sign even said, the baggy jean, which is exactly what's on trend. The Easter egg hunt continues in the free people with a wonderful, beautiful deodorant spot. Ew. But the biggest trend of all for spring 2024, especially at the Mall of America, is the blue M&M of course. Yes, the blue M&M went very viral online not that long ago. But anyways, that is all we have for you guys today. As per usual, let us know if you like this and want us to do them in future seasons. And we will see you on Thursday.